Welcome back to the Business News Hour. Grateful that you have clicked through again today. We've got a a, a person on our newsmaker line that is not only engaging, but that's what she does. She is a public professional public speaker. She does keynote addresses. She does um, seminars on a whole host of items. And we're not going to necessarily talk about what it is she talks about, but we want to learn the inside track of the business of being a professional speaker from Houston, Texas. Meet Karen McCullough. Karen, welcome to the Business News Hour. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, I, for full disclosure, uh, I should mention that you and I have met before. We have worked together before, and we will be working together again come January at a at an event in Mobile, Alabama. But I thought this would be a great opportunity for people who wonder about the business of business. You know, what what's the business of being a professional speaker like. So tell us a little bit of your story, and then we'll dive into some other questions. Where where did all this come from? It came from um, being unemployed. <laughs> uh, I, had, <laughs> I had a retail business in Houston. It was quite successful. Four, four clothing stores, uh, kind of Ralph Lauren-inspired stores. And um, they, I had them for almost 20 years. And as the dates got closer to uh, 2000, People stopped dressing. Casual dress came in, and my business was, it went from skyrocketing to down to the bottom. And I knew I had to make a decision that gradually closed each store. And by the end, um, wow. I was thinking, what am I going to do? Went to a coach, and she said, you love work. You love uh, getting your employees excited. Why don't you think about speaking and sharing some of the wisdom that you had over those 20 years? And that's what I did. And, and it, I had no idea what I, I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. I went to a, I went to a National Speakers Association meeting here in Houston, and there were like-minded people there who wanted to be speakers. Uh, I joined. I got into their mentee program, and I started speaking within six months. I, well, I start. I, I think my first gig was three hundred bucks. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about money, sure, but, but um, right. I had a huge calendar, and I wrote every time I got an engagement, I wrote the money down. And I was highly motivated because I had no other work. And I had something to talk about, which I had no idea people were interested in. So um, and, and what, I have something that it, people want to hear. And in those early days, Karen, Karen McCullough, ladies and gentlemen, out of Houston, Texas. Uh, Karen, in those early days, what were you talking about? Well, I took, I, I actually went down the wrong lane in the beginning, and it, it slowed me down. I thought I knew clothes, right? And so at the time... People were, it was casual dress, was kind of killing careers. People were coming to work rather sloppily. Right. So my first talk was called The Look of Leadership, and I talked about how to dress. To be honest with you, that topic had a limited dollar amount on it. I wasn't going to have a profitable career speaking on how to dress for work. It's a, it's a nice topic, but it wasn't my topic. So very soon I decided that I was the queen of change, I will be honest with you, I had heard if you read 10 books, you become an expert. (laughs) So I read everything possible on change, and I started talking about change. My first talk was called Change is Good, You Go First. I I remember that. that. I remember that. That's still my thoughts, but yeah. It it caught on. People liked the title, and it was basically about how do you respond to change, and how can you become a change agent. That was the smartest. that, That topic is called Evergreen. It's a topic that is always needed, always necessary. And so I can take that talk, and every year hmm. I can upgrade it, and I can make it more relevant to what's going on. You know, And now we're in 2019, so that talk is quite different than it was in 2005. Sure it was. Now, talking about the business of being a public speaker, uh, and then the recession hit. What happened during those recessionary times, Karen? I had two recessions. I had 2001 because Enron was my first client. I lost, uh, besides 9-11, I lost Enron and I lost Arthur Anderson. So I had to start over in 2002 and then again in 2009. I'm, I, I think that one of my qualities is that I'm an opportunist. I, or I, I don't want to use that word. But I understand. Because it's not as positive. But in 2008, there was this thing called the Facebook coming on the scene and Twitter. I knew nothing about them, but I knew that if I could get into social, I wouldn't have to spend the money marketing anymore. If I could get a 
a face on LinkedIn, a face on Twitter, a face on Facebook, and start to promote myself digitally, it would be, first of all, free. And second of all, it could be something I could do every day. So I partnered with a millennial. Her name is Crystal Washington here in Houston. She was 23. She was a kind of a head honcho guru on Facebook. And uh, I was a speaker, and we decided to co-mentor each other. And I helped her become a speaker, and she helped me understand social media. Together, we created a little company called Social Tunities. In 2009, 2010, we taught associations and small businesses in Houston how to use Facebook to market their business. <laughs> that seems like so I'm long ago, thinking, doesn't it? Man. Huh? Huh? You got to be thinking. Get... I'm always thinking. You've got to. And, you know, for those of people that want to be a speaker out there, because everybody seems to want it, the first thing I'll tell you to do is to get good. Because... The best way that I got booked, the number one way I still get booked is people see me and they tell their boss or they tell their their community about me, and I get more bookings from referrals than I do from anything else. People put a lot of money into marketing, and I think that's great, but then they get up on stage and they kind of suck. And (laughs) nobody's going to book you if you're not good, so we forget that we have to practice. We have to get good. We have to tell great stories. Well, you just, you, you, exactly. What does make a good public speaker? I, I suspect it's the ability to tell a good story. Would that be accurate? You know, I'm, I'm on this new kick right now. I've heard so many speakers talk about themselves. Well, first I did this, and then I climbed yeah. Mount Everest, and then I swam through the Atlantic Ocean, and I'm so wonderful. And there's this thing out there called the hero's journey. We as speakers have to make the audience the hero. Whatever I do is has to be a vehicle for you and empowering an audience. And I think that we have gone from this speaker being, you know, like the rock star person to making the audience the winner. And so there, it's an art. It's an art on how you can take your stories and make the audience want to be there and want to do it rather than just talking about how great we are. So we today have to inspire people to not be afraid and to go out there and to try and to do better and be better. Our guest is Karen McCullough. She is based in Houston, Texas, and we're talking about the business of being a professional speaker. Uh, how busy are you, Karen? Uh, how, how many places are you traveling to? What, what's your schedule look like in a month? Just a snapshot. I do about six a month, five, five to six. I love to get, if anybody here from Houston is listening, I love working in my hometown. I love when I can just drive to an event. Um, I'm getting, I've been doing this almost 20 years. Wow. So I'm really starting to look at where I have to go. I don't want to have to get on a plane and then take a bus and a train and a boat to get there. So I'm really working on a direct flight and an Uber ride to the conference. That's kind of my goal this year. Yeah. I totally, (laughs) totally understand. All right, let, let's uh, let's switch gears here for just a moment and talk about uh, again the business of being a public speaker. What do you need to get into this? I mean, all a good story, a good ability. You need the talent, all of those types of things. Uh, I would suspect you need to have been pre practiced. But what about outside influences? About marketing yourself or about um, speakers bureaus, things like that. Okay, I think that. The biggest mistake that people make is they put do their own website, and they make it look like um, maybe they do it on Wix. I don't know how they do it. I don't want to say anything negative. But I think that how you show up digitally is number one. So you have to have someone taking pictures of you, talking to the audience. You need a nice portfolio of photographs. It can be with, a, with your new iPhone Eight. It could be with your. I could be with a. You know, your phone. It doesn't have to be a professional. But you need pictures of you on stage with people. You need a lot of photographs. Then you need content. You need to write out what you do, and you need to use words repeatedly so that you have a search engine optimization SEO. So you need to say you're a keynote speaker. You need to say what you speak on. We have to really put time and effort and some money into our website. And into how we show up. That's number one, how we show up digitally. Video always helps in the beginning, though. If you're not, you're going to get better. I wouldn't put video up in the very beginning unless it's really good. Because a video can really hurt you if it's not, um, if it doesn't show the energy or the content. So I might wait on video for a couple years, yeah. 
And, and, and being done by a professional always helps. It, yeah, it does. Um, and it'll show if you're not. All right. You know, you can tell, oh, that was an iPhone. Don't do that. People are, here's, here's the thing that people don't get. Someone is saying you're good enough to speak to my audience, to my company or to my, my association. They're putting their reputation online. Yes. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot going for this. So someone has to really believe in you. So you've got to really build that credibility. And I think that so many people think that they're going to get out there that first year and they're going to kill it. You're going to get better every day. Every time you practice, you will get better and better. Sometimes I say I want to give people that hired me in the beginning their money back because I realized how bad I was. Uh, they were, they're helping train you. They were training you. How many, how many topics? You're going to get better. <laughs> how many topics do you speak on, Karen? I started with one, and I have a lot now. So, but it all—if you—it's it's almost like um, the golden triangle. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2006, I started speaking on the generation. Um, it was a part of my change, okay. Um, and then I realized that millennials are changing the branding, which is where we are right today. So now I could brought my branding back. So I speak on change. I speak on the generations. I speak on rebranding. I speak on employee engagement. And I speak on um, personal branding. If you really look at that loop, it's all around change. Right. It's all around what, when the generations changed, I picked it up. Um, when the branding changed, I picked it up because I knew about it. You'll find... It's a phenomenal, phenomenal business to be in because you're going to continue to grow as the time goes on and, and things change. You're going to grow and change. And I say it's everything that you do right now is product development, and you are the product. Right. Every penny you put into yourself is developing yourself. And I suspect to be able to speak and be relevant to the times, you as a professional public speaker need to be engaged in – trends what's going on with consumer trends what's going on with business trends what trends uh, are emerging out there that then you can take to your audience and they may or may not have thought of these but at least you give them a clear path would that be accurate it's totally accurate a lot of people go into speaking and they want to tell their truth they want to tell their story and that's nice but Today, nobody cares. I mean, I'm not being blunt, but today it's all about what about me, the the, uh, audience. So I have a a ritual. I listen to CNBC every day. I find out what's going on in the stock market, what McDonald's is doing, you know, what Costco is doing, when Uber is going to go live. And I listen to those trends because that's where my interest lies. Mm -hmm. You have to find out where your interest lies. It may be in listening to TED Talk speakers. But somehow you have got to continually feed yourself current, relevant information on your topic or on what's just going on in the the world, because that's really where we are today as speakers. It's not just about your story anymore. It's about how we relate to the audience and how the audience views our information to become better at what they do. Absolutely. Be relevant to those people that are paying the dollars to, uh, to hire you. Good stuff. Karen McCullough. Thank you so Thanks. much for uh, spending some time with us. I, I do appreciate that. You're welcome. I and love it, talking about speaking. I, I, I can tell. And, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we will have links to Karen McCullough's website up on our radio blog. And uh, Karen, I look forward to seeing you. You and I will be together in Mobile, Alabama next month. Uh, look forward to uh, visiting with you more there. Thank you. Thank See you. you All right. That once again was Karen McCullough from Houston, Texas. We will have links to Karen's website up on our radio blog so you can get to know more about this very talented woman who took on public speaking as a necessity. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks so very much for being with us. For all of us associated with Insight on Business, the News Hour, Chap Ramsey is our production coordinator, the Peas. The music you're listening to right now is arranged, composed, and conducted exclusively for the Business News Hour by our friend James Goodlett of Jam Good Productions. You need some original music for your project? We can hook you up. For all those folks, my name's Michael Libby. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Be safe, be well, be careful most of all. Be good to your fellow man. Good day.